Hello, fellow historians of the world. I am your host, Aztec Historian, and have come before you today to discuss one of the pivotal events in both American and Mexican history. An event so important that it changed not only the faces of both these countries, but also their futures later on. Right. Having said that, let's begin. Chapter 1. At the beginning, there was Texas. A new nation that had just achieved independence from its previous ruler of Mexico. During this time, America was in full swing with its expansionist ideas of manifest destiny, and with Texas gaining independence, talks of annexation began. However, Mexico didn't recognize Texas' independence and threatened war if the United States were to annex the country. The issue was put off during Martin Van Buren's presidency on account of Mexico's threat of war, and incorporating Texas into the Union would give more power to the slave states. When President John Tyler began his tenure as president, talks of annexing Texas emerged again, and Tyler wrote a treaty of annexation that failed to get substantial Senate votes, but he tried a second time with the support of President-elect James K. Polk, which finally passed. December 29, 1845 saw Texas incorporated into the Union, but further strained relations with the United States and Mexico. The big problem that now faced the two republics was a territory dispute between Texas and Mexico. Specifically, Texas claimed its border with Mexico to be the Rio Grande, whereas Mexico claimed the border was actually at the Nueces River. As a result of this dispute, new president James K. Polk sent Zachary Taylor and an army to the disputed territory, more specifically to Corpus Christi. Polk then sent John Slidell to offer to buy Mexican land in the disputed territory as well as California and New Mexico. The Mexican president learned of Slidell's mission and refused to see him. Once Polk heard that Slidell's mission failed, he ordered Zachary Taylor to head further into the disputed territory and started making preparations to persuade Congress that war with Mexico might be inevitable. Before he could do this, however, Polk received word that a skirmish occurred between Mexican and American troops that would be known as the Thornton Affair, which was that Mexico felt Taylor's advances into the disputed territory to be an act of aggression, and sent troops to deal with this situation. Polk then used this incident to persuade Congress to declare war against Mexico, stating, American blood has been shed on American soil. On May 13, 1846, the United States Congress declares war on Mexico. Taylor began his campaign by achieving victory at Palo Alto, and then at Resaca de la Palma, moving on to capture Matamoros without much resistance. Taylor moved on to Monterrey, where he once again defeated the Mexican defenders. It would be at Buena Vista where Taylor would achieve his last victory, because after that battle, Winfield Scott took charge of the Mexican invasion and headed to Veracruz after taking much of Taylor's army. General Stephen Kearney was ordered with conquering Alta California and swiftly began his campaign by capturing Santa Fe on August 18, 1846. Kearney then headed further west toward California when he experienced a defeat at the Battle of San Pascual. However, he continued toward Los Angeles and won a victory at the Battle of San Gabriel. In January of 1847, it was after this that Los Californios, the men fighting against the Americans in California, finally surrendered. The general of Los Californios, Andres Pico, signed a Treaty of Capitulation on January 13, 1847, known as the Treaty of Cajuega and thus the war in Alta California was over. Winfield Scott began his campaign with an amphibious landing at Veracruz, which granted him a decisive victory. 
Scott then headed into the Mexican interior, toward the Mexican capital. Scott faced General Santa Ana at the Battle of Cerro Gordo, where he managed to defeat the Mexican forces and continued marching toward Mexico City. Scott's army then engaged the Mexican forces in a series of battles that took place at Contreras, Churubusco, which is where the St. Patrick's Battalion was captured, Molino del Rey, and Chapultepec. Every one of these battles ended in an American victory, and with Scott's forces storming Mexico City, where the Mexican forces finally surrendered. The war finally came to an end on February 2, 1848, with the signing of the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo, which granted the United States control over Alta California. The U.S. Peace Commissioner in charge of ending hostilities was Nicholas P. Trist, who was later called back to Washington, D.C. at Polk's order, but refused when he was able to garner a reasonable peace treaty, which Polk considered a big no-no, but he nevertheless decided to go along with it. There were many Mexicans who wanted to continue the fight through guerrilla warfare, but the elites of the country who controlled the government saw the idea of the weapons and power being placed in the masses as a giant problem that would evolve into some sort of race or class war that would see the death of the elite class. So in the end, it was the elite's fear of the people that made them decide to surrender to the United States rather than continue to fight. First reason being moronic leadership, since politicians seize control of the government every week. <sighs> Military generals had zero sense of strategy given that they had attained their ranks based on social status rather than actual merit. The second reason was that there was heavy infighting within Mexico. Many other states besides Texas had started their own revolutions like the republics of Yucatan in the Rio Grande. The third reason was that there were poor arms for the Mexican army. The Mexican soldiers had inferior muskets compared to the Americans, and the Mexican artillery was also lackluster and outdated compared to the new and deadly flying artillery of the American army. The fourth reason was that the Mexican army itself had little desire to fight for a government that couldn't care less about them. Many of the soldiers were conscripted into service. Now, the reasons these things all happened in Mexico was that the first reason was Mexico had romanticized Los Caudillos, and Caudillo basically means strong man. Santa Ana is an example of this since he held power in Mexico 11 times using both opportunities, his charisma, and political and military support every time and people looked up to him as well as some sort of savior of Mexico. The second reason being that Mexico's population was devastated after having been ravaged by a decade-long revolution. The third reason is that much of what Mexico's economy depended on was destroyed during the war for independence, such as the mining industry. The fourth and final reason was that the centralist Mexican government was very authoritarian, which irked many states, causing them to rebel. The Mexican-American War sparked much regional-wide protest, with many seeing the war as immoral, and others protesting based on the fact that it would upset the balance of free states and slave states. Abraham Lincoln gained much notoriety with his opposition of the war with Mexico, which was present in his spot resolution speech in January 1848. Henry Clay was also opposed to annexing Texas as he wanted to focus more on economic issues and didn't want to risk a war with Mexico over Texas. In the end, Henry Clay's son died in the war he opposed, fallen at the Battle of Buena Vista. Many details point out that the war did appear unjustified, as America fought the war for expansion and the excuse that Mexico shed American blood on American soil, which is hollow considering the American troops that were killed had been in disputed territory 
claimed by both Mexico and Texas. And the attack that the American soldiers suffered by the Mexicans was by no means preemptive, considering that Mexico did warn the United States that annexing Texas would guarantee war between the two nations. The United States annexed Texas without taking the threat of war seriously, and Polk further constrained this by sending American troops into disputed territory with the threat of war in mind. And thus, the Mexican-American War was fought. It was likely that the two countries could have avoided war. If the United States had first negotiated with Mexico about annexing Texas, the whole Thornton affair could have been avoided. And as for California and many other territories the expansionists wanted, they could have been acquired without having to start a war with Mexico and the United States. Following an example like the Texan Revolution or the Bear Flag Revolt, Americans could have sent people to start revolutions in those territories, create a state, and later have it annexed by the United States. Mexico was too weak to enforce its northernmost border, so the government could have no airtight solution to stem the flow of immigrants. However, this is just speculation. Polk wanted to acquire the land before it fell under foreign influence, such as under Britain or any other country. He was also an expansionist man who wanted to see the United States reach from sea to shining sea. No. Annexation would have provided many complications, such as introducing a Catholic and Hispanic majority group into the United States, as well as introducing a Spanish-speaking people to an English-dominated United States. It also would have upset the balance between slave states and free states massively. There would have also been staunch resistance from the Mexican populace who opposed complete annexation. The Mexican-American War was no doubt a big event that changed the lives of Mexico and the United States forever. The United States were going to be enthralled in the Civil War since the outcome of the Mexican-American War upset the balance of free states and slave states. Some even stating that the Civil War was retribution for the Mexican-American War. Mexico would go on to be ruled by Santa Ana once more until he will have made the fatal mistake of selling more Mexican land to the United States, which would become known as the Gazdin Purchase, and would lead to Santa Ana being overthrown by liberal President Benito Juarez, who would go on to lead the country through the War of Reformation against the Conservative Party and later during the Mexican-Franco War. And thus, this is where the history lesson finally ends. I thank all of you for watching this lesson through to the end, and hope that you will join me on further explorations of history, because I'd like to think that there's nothing more enlightening than learning and studying the events, the people, the mistakes, or the successes that transpired before us. Once again, thank you all for watching, and have a nice day.